My name is Glenn Anderson. This is a course called Coding for Crosswords. It's designed to take you from the absolute beginning basics of programming up to the point where you can write a small but complete program that will construct crossword puzzles for fun, for your friends and family, and maybe even to publish. It's designed as a 19 module course, and it contains about 12 hours of video content. In addition to that, I expect there to be about 20 hours of exercises if you do all of the challenge exercises. It's a very interactive course. I've designed it to be hands-on. There's no way you can learn how to program by just watching a video. So quite frequently, there will be these challenges like this. They will pop up, and then I will ask you to code yourself some piece of functionality, and I'll make it, I'll intend to make it very incremental so that you'll only have to code something that I've already explained or that pushes your knowledge just a little bit. Maybe with a web search, you can find something. Maybe with trying it and erring, you can find something. Programming is the kind of activity you only learn by doing. You cannot learn uh, passively. So if you're interested in this course, I really hope you give it a try and you can start uh, this module is just the overview. Module one talks about crossword puzzles, just briefly. Module two talks about how to get your compiler infrastructure working. And I talk about four different ways to do this. You can do it on Windows. You can do it just in a browser. You can do it using Linux, or you can do it on a Macintosh. And there are probably other ways too, but these are just four ways where you can compile C++ code. It's a standard code. It's a text-based application. There aren't that many fancy libraries to link in or graphics cards or tricky audio things. It's just text files. So I think it should be portable to most any platform. Learning how to program works best when you have a goal in mind. And so that's why the crossword puzzle construction problem is interesting. If you just try to learn the features of a language in a breadth first way, meaning that you try to understand every single aspect of the language, like for instance, you're going to talk about operators like plus, minus, divide, modulus, bit shift. If you just try to learn all of those at once, there's like 27 of them and you'll forget them before you need them. So the philosophy of this course is to teach only the things in the language that are necessary to get something done. So for every module, there's a clear goal and we work hard to introduce only the features of the language that you need to accomplish that goal. And that way you'll retain the knowledge better and you won't be exposed to so many aspects of the language. Any programming language has many, many features, um, especially C++. So I'm threading very carefully through all those features to present a very coherent, I hope, view of simple language features, simple programs, simple goals, simple data structures, but yet they combine in a way to solve an interesting and fun problem. Each module is about 20 minutes to 40 minutes long. But again, they're going to have three or four or five challenges in them. And that means you need to stop the video and perform that challenge alongside the code that I'm writing. You will find errors. You will make typos. Maybe you'll make the same typos I make. I will also make typos and you'll see how I correct those. Dealing with compiler errors is one of the challenges of programming. And always maintaining kind of an optimistic attitude is very important because there's always lots of errors as you learn how things work and it can be frustrating. So I encourage you to be patient, take your time, have fun with this and have a problem solving, puzzle solving mentality to it. You know, you want to discover things slowly uh, and you want to be, um, you want to maintain that sense of wonder about this computer. It's a fantastic, powerful machine that we're allowed to program and it's just a matter of making sure that you know how to program it and don't get frustrated with some of the particular details. You know, a semicolon has to be there or you have to take exactly this argument that way there. So I want to get you through those issues so that you can appreciate the beauty and the power and just purely the fun of programming and having a computer work on problems for you, like building an interesting crossword puzzle that you can send to your family and friends. The type of puzzle we're talking about solving is like this. This is a New York Times example. And by solving throughout the course, I really mean constructing. It's a, 
we're not writing software that tries to read these English clues and reason about them and come up with answers. I'm talking about solving the puzzle of creating such a crossword. So you start with some seed entries and then you want the software program to fill in all of the words in many different combinations so that we can then produce this type of crossword to give to our friends. Um, the crossword that we're going to use is not this big one. That's actually pretty hard to construct such a crossword. We're going to use this crossword for the duration of the basics half of this course. And we're going to learn how to do things such as read in a file that describes this grid. We're going to read in a library of 12,000 most popular English words. We're going to write routines to search that library for patterns like D blank 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 and find all of the words that will fit in here and then the crosswords and so forth. We're going to write software that will then loop recursively through all those solutions and run millions of attempts to find the best crossword answers, the best crossword construction that we can for this puzzle. So what language should you learn if you've decided to learn programming? There are many choices. Let's go to Google and see what it says. So what language to program? Let's say you can ask any question like that you'll get a whole ton of answers. There's a lot of opinions about this. Let's just look at one of the answers and the, the choices will be similar in all these articles with different sorts of spin. Um, here, for example, is, let me blow this up a little bit. Here's, an, here's one list. Now, Python is number one. And I have to say, if you're gonna learn, if you were to learn how to program, most people, I think Python is the right answer. It's an interpreted language, so it's pretty friendly. It's kind of like basic was in the 1980s. Python is kind of that for 2020. It's kind of the easiest language to start learning. It's not that great for production code because it's not, it's not a typed language. Um, things are a little more loosey-goosey. You can type in code. The interpreter will try to do the best it can with it, but that's helpful to learn a language. So Python is certainly probably the number one choice. Um, the, on this list, the next language is JavaScript, which is a front-end language. So if you're really mostly interested in web design and front-end uh, uh, appearance, you know, HTML and related um, uh, graphic design of interfaces, JavaScript, probably looking for a course that teaches JavaScript is the best fit for you. Now, these next three, C, I wouldn't learn anymore. C is really pretty old at this point, but Java and C++, the number three and number five on this list, um, are both fine languages to learn. I think those are, and they're very similar actually. So this course I'm teaching is C++. And the reason is not because I decided that C++ was the best thing to teach. It's more that I was already writing during the COVID quarantine. I took up a project to write software to build crosswords. I was disappointed in the capabilities of the software that was out there. Uh, it really did not do a good job exhaustively searching for these 15 by 15 New York Times style puzzles and I wanted to do something better. And so that's why I started writing this code. And I wrote about 10,000 lines of code in C++, and that was necessary because it's very performant code. It needs to search billions and billions of, of, of possibilities. And so C++ is a great workhorse for that type of code, and I'd used it for many years. So I wrote this code in C++, and then, um, my kids decided that they wanted to learn C++ and I realized this was a great framework. So the code in this course is about 500 lines of C++ that's reduced from that. It's just the basics of that. And then in the advanced part of this course, I'll talk more about a lot of the tricks that I do in the 10,000 line version of the code, which is more like a production software, which can produce software for, for 15 by 15 and 21 by 21 puzzles that can be published. So the answer to the language question is, I think you wanna find a course that you like, and if it teaches Python, that's fine. If it teaches C++, that's fine. If it teaches Java, that's fine. Once you learn one of those languages, you can really go between them quite easily. They're just mostly just differences in syntax. C++ used to be a language that was very rigid and more heavy syntactically. The latest versions of C++ over the past 10 years have made it much more friendly. So you'll see the code that I write in this course actually almost looks just like Python. The way that you iterate over groups of things and the way that you assign variables to each other 
uh, there are some of those features that have crept into C++ that make it much more usable, the way you do default values for variables, um, things like that. So my hope is that there are a few topics in C++ that are very esoteric. We really won't go to those. We won't expose you to those. There's no reason you have to dive into the deep end of C++. There's plenty of things you can do with the basic functions. So my point in this class is not to teach you all the crazy features of C++ at all. It's to stay with the very basics. In fact, you could rewrite this course, typing everything I'm typing in Python, and it wouldn't even really change very much. So I think that's a success from my point of view because it's just teaching the basic concepts of data, algorithms, how do you think about the relationships of data and the functions you want to run on them? How do you print things out? How do you read from files? How do you put it all together into, into algorithms that traverse the data and do interesting things? And those concepts are all the same across the different languages. So that's it for the intro. Module one, which is up next, will tell you about crosswords in general. And then module two, you have to pick which one you'd like to set up for yourself. You have to set up either Windows or you can just use a browser if you have something like a Chromebook or just some other browser. Or Linux, if you have a Linux machine, you're very well set up to do G++, C++. Um, and then the fourth one is a Mac. And the Mac is kind of an interesting superset. From the Mac, you can do everything. You can act like, you can act like a Linux machine because it's based on Unix. Uh, you, can, you can also download the same software we're gonna download for Windows on the Mac. So the Mac I leave last because really, it's just going to say see any of the above based on what you want to do. Um, so that's that's it. So good luck on the course. I hope you um, I hope you really dive in and commit to this course and get a lot out of it.